Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, December 2nd, 2016. I wanted to do a, a follow-up. I had actually a request on the um, front page of the site. One of the members had asked if I could put up some charts of individual semis. Uh, I've been tracking the sector, posting charts both on the front page and in the trading room, but then again, the charts have, have changed over the last uh, few few weeks here. So it's, I'll go through some of my top picks right now in the sector, and we'll look at the components of SMH. There's a few different semi ETFs. This is one of them, SOXX. I believe this is the same index right here, the Philly uh, Sox Semiconductor Index. And that SOXS, which is the three times short semi ETF, and SOXL, the three time bullish semi ETF. I believe they track this sector. So if you're trading those, then you want to use this chart and, you know, cover, uh, I don't use the charts of the three time uh, ETFs when I'm for charting purposes because of the distortion due to the price decay. So in this case, you could see there, I this again, this chart was posted before. Uh, it was posted yesterday and before then. So you can see this is the first uh, support area target. And as expected, I always you know, I say this very often, the initial tag of support uh, when tested from above typically produces a reaction. And this is a reaction. A reaction I define as a pause and or consolidation. So far, we're consolidating right on that level like glue. And I remember, that's a big move down yesterday. That's what I call a momentum overshoot right there, that little candlestick shadow or tail you see. And so far, look at the body is right on there. So you know, whether we bounce a little bit, I don't think we'll get too much of a bounce. Uh, this will be your next target around the 108 area. I have it at 107.95, the actual support level. So maybe you cover a little bit above 108. And then I could see a move down to 102. And quite possibly uh, more than that. But right now, that's all I'm looking for. A uh, couple things to note, too. On my daily charts, I like to use a MACD, um, but when you have a security with a very large range in price, in other words, I'm going to grab the lows here on February, move up to the highs. If you look at the box on the left, that shows you that the semis have gained 62% this year. Um, that's a big price differential. And if you look at, uh, put a PPO up, it'll do a better job. It's the cousin of the MACD. Very similar in nature, except it just does a better job on things with large price swings. That's why I use a PPO on my weekly time frames in lieu of the MACD and on certain securities. Now, uh, you can see the difference here if I really stretch this out. Look at the downward slope. Look at the clear negative divergence that PPO shows. And yet, if we take a look at the MACD, it's about flatline divergence, about an equal high. So you don't see as much divergence there. Just a little FYI. So as I go through these names of the individual semis, they've had huge runs. You would see more pronounced divergence if I had the PPO up. And again, I've only marked it on a few of the charts here. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the MACD just uh, for the sake of this video. All right, so there's the socks. There's the targets, uh, 102. And, you know, you get a reaction here. You probably have a reaction here. Uh, but ultimately, if you're a swing trader and you don't want to try to game these bounces, uh, that's where I, I think we're going on the uh, socks. Let's see if I have anything compelling on the weekly chart. Yeah, we, we're taking a look at the weekly charts. You know, uh, for those of you new to the site, I might seem like a foaming at the mouth bear. That's not the case. I pointed out this this big symmetrical triangle back here, you know, back in 2012, I think it was. And this was a measured target, and uh, which is the distance of the triangle pattern. Uh, that broke out and played out uh, for the expected or the measured move and then some. You know, we had quite a few, you know, long semi-trades back then. Uh, now what we're, we're doing is looking at a an ascending price channel here in the socks, you see these two parallel lines, um, and you see divergence at the most recent high. You can also see some longer standing divergence if you look at that other uh, trend line here. So it, it, this is just one heck of a run. The semis, uh, which really, you know, uh, the canary in the coal mine for the tech industry, and tech has carried this, this bull market higher. Uh, it's been the leading one of, if not the leading sectors. So there's a 435% run uh, since the lows back in 2008. And uh, the charts say that the semis may be topping out here. Uh, and at the very least, they're due for a pullback. And if you look at this chart, it looks down here at at least that 101.80 area. All right, let's 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 dig into the other charts. SMH, again, a lot of you guys like to trade that, I know. So we'll, we'll take a look here. This is a daily chart. I've been sh uh, sharing this one, posting it pretty actively for the last month or so here. 
nothing that hasn't been covered. Uh, you know, my trading style is, is I try to keep it fairly simple. I, I sniff out divergent highs and lows to look for major uh, impending trend changes in the market. And without fail, you know, in the past, these are very profitable corrections and we're looking at the downside here because right now we have a divergent high i can do the same thing with divergent lows like if we had a divergent low here again i don't want to make the chart too busy so what happened here is we had a divergent top which i pointed out back then and that did lead to a correction and this is when we shorted a lot of these names however and this sometimes happens you get a push there was a, a push up a marginal new high that looks like a sort of like a blow off top in the market um most importantly, yeah, there's a difference, in my opinion, of being stubborn and refusing that you're wrong on a position or sticking with it. You know, I, I tend to be a very tenacious trader. If the you know the charts still confirm, which they did here, uh, again, you had this additional new high. This second only created another divergent top. In other words, the charts remain bearish. At no point in time were the divergences even close to being negated or taken out. And what I mean by that is you'd have to have the MACD. So you have this peak back here. And again, it would be even more pronounced if I use the PPO. But uh, you'd have to essentially take out that uh, high to take out those divergences. And we didn't even take out that previous reaction high. So the divergences remained intact, uh, intact and this only became a more bearish chart. Now, if you look at this trend line here, I just drew... Uh, this is a long-term trend line off the lows. If that goes, that's a primary trend line, then the semis are heading a lot lower. And by the, the, the scope of the divergences, meaning the magnitude from this point to this point, these are some pretty big divergences. And they, in my opinion, uh, forecast a move much, much larger than this little blip right here. Again, look back in time. Look at this divergent high here. Look at the move that followed. Look at this divergent high. Look at the move that followed. Um, this one right here, I had a divergence on the uh, divergent high on the MACD, but not on the RSI. So you've got confirmed divergence on both going all the way back to August, uh, back to this point, uh, two consecutive divergent highs. And again, these are the targets for SMH. They were the targets from the last official trade. And I certainly see, you know, a move down between this T2 and T3 area in the coming, uh, probably in the coming months. It won't be a straight shot. Um, could be pretty quick. Remember, stocks fall a lot faster than they fall. When you get these blow-off tops, it's just what it does. It just clears out the short interest, sucks in the last of the uh, longs, and, and really sets the stage for a pretty powerful move. And again, you can just go back on just about any chart uh, in time, and you will see what I just said, that stocks tend to fall a lot faster than they rise. You'd have to go to the left of the chart here to see how many months of gains were wiped out possibly years in just a couple months here on that drop. All right, let's now dig into the individual components as requested. Um, now, he, we know this is the king of the semis right here. This is Intel. Big, big lot going on in this chart. Um, you have this, this uptrend line, which is a very important uptrend line. Uh, just to the left of the chart, I'll zoom out to a two-day period chart, which I'll cover so we can see. This was a head and shoulders pattern. We had shorted Intel back here and uh, hit that first target, fell just shy of, shy of our second target right there. And since then, that that was the lows. Uh, and it you can see a very nice uptrend line forming, numerous reactions. That's what uh, helps to validate a trend line. The more reactions you have, the more valid and technically significant that trend line is. So this is this is a real uh, nice one here. There we are. We're sitting on that trend line, the fourth visit. So uh, you can take a glass half full or half empty approach. Glass half full, you say, oh, okay, uh, semis are in a uh, primary uptrend. I'm going to go long here, and maybe it works out for you. Uh, at the very least, Intel may produce a reaction there. However, uh, support is support until broken, and if it does break, that's a very significant trend line, and I think Intel is going quite a bit lower. I will say that it is not one of my favorite shorts. I don't plan to short Intel personally, but I just wanted to point that out because of the importance in the sector. You can see this little flagging type action here. You have this um, bearish pennant right here, or bear flag, I should say, and this is your flagpole, so if that if that breaks down, you would you, this would project right about to that target area that I'm referring to right here. This is a support zone, these three lines. And again, this is a pretty uh, bearish technical event if and when that uptrend line goes. All right, so let's look at Intel on a, on a different time period. There's that head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, 
neckline, breakdown back test, um, and then that that's all happened. Now here's that uh, uptrend line that I just mentioned. Uh, the divergence isn't clear here. These lines get distorted. Let's take a look at a weekly chart. Uh, there's a weekly chart. Now this also uh, says a lot here. This is a very important, this is our primary bull market uptrend line. It comes off the 2009 lows in Intel. It's been visited numerous times. We had the intra week pierce but you can see that's a green candle that means we close back above that trend line on a weekly basis so that uh, I have no problem excluding that uh, on this trend line drawing numerous reactions again you can see there if you zoom in that's just a candlestick shadow ie a tail uh, so we had candlesticks kept closing above there on a weekly basis that's all that matters when you're trading a weekly time frame so this is a very important trend line at the very least I expect Intel to visit that trend line once again based on what's happened. So if I grab where we are today, kind of project out a couple weeks by moving forward, that's about a 5% drop in Intel. And, uh, you know, on the most bullish case right now that I'd have for Intel would be a reversal uh, off that level. So about a, almost a 5% drop, then a reversal. However, if that trend line breaks, and it is very long in the tooth, this uptrend, this uptrend now is seven, let's see, it should be about uh, seven, yeah, 7.7 7 years. Um, this is what puts me in the camp that uh, I don't want to step in and, and buy Intel on that trend line. I might cover a position, might pay a, play a bounce trade. But you see these divergences. These are long-term, powerful negative divergences, just as we had negative divergence back here from this point with the Intel making a higher high. You can see the negative divergence that I'm drawing. Look at that drop. That is a powerful drop. That took Intel down from... Uh, the th rough, almost about the 30 area, 29 area, all the way down 19. Uh, big, big drop in Intel. And again, now you have divergences that, that rival those. Uh, so this little blip that we've had so far is as painful as it might be if you've been long Intel uh, or trying to, you know, buy the dips. Uh, I think this is only the beginning of a much larger drop, and that's why I favor ultimately a break of this downtrend and, and why I'm doing this video. I think if you have patience, uh, I think there's a tremendous amount of money to be made, made in the semis over the next year or so on the short side. All right, uh, let's go on. We're on a weekly time frame, so I'll leave it there. TSM, Taiwan Semi, this is a an official trade idea on the site. Beautiful looking chart. Here's your primary uptrend line. Breakdown, back test, back test. We regained it, but we did so with a divergent high. You can see the negative divergence here in place. You have this minor uptrend line that comes in below. Watch, watching for a break of that one. And again, longer term, these are long term targets. These aren't, I don't believe these are the official targets on the uh, uh, the active trade idea. These are just long term targets. For those of you that can short a stock, if you're a trend trader, um, you know, trend traders like a swing trader, we're trying to capture the bulk of a larger trend. So your time period's longer. Uh, it's sort of like investing in reverse. If you short uh, TSM on a break of this line, a weekly break and close below that level, I mean, the profit potential, again, you're looking at a drop even to the minimum target about 32%. Um, so let's look at uh, the daily chart. Again, this is an official short trade, negative divergence, rising wedge, breakdown back test, just all textbook technicals. These these semis, even though we got taken out on the, I think, the the SMH trade, uh, a lot of these individual semis like TSM are doing well. This one broke down, back tested, came around here, flirted around that S1 support one level, and we missed the hitting the first profit target yesterday. You can see it's there. Uh, the low yesterday was... 28.34 versus a first target of 28.23. So we're almost there on the first target, and I don't see any reason why this one won't hit it. Uh, it's done done well so far. Uh, you had this little flagging type action going on here. We broke down from there, impulsive move. Uh, so I think it's just a matter of time before we hit that. There is this downtrend, or I'm sorry, uptrend line to come in that may come into play here. It most likely will. So somewhere around here between that first target, which keep in mind, I set my targets above the actual support level. Uh, that actual support level is at 28.18. So that's five cents above the, uh, the horizontal line. And then you have uh, this uptrend line here. So somewhere in there, uh, we're likely to get a uh, a reaction unless the semi sector as a whole is melting down, selling off really hard. Then at that time, then we might just punch through. And this would be, as of now, that's my final target, 26.76. So if you're willing to ride out the zigs and the zags, 
Um, I can't remember offhand exactly where we shorted this, but from the breakdown, and we might even have shorted that one within the wedge, if I'm not mistaken. So you're looking at about a 12% drop on TSM. All right, next up, Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm's a big one in the in the industry. Uh, here's an uptrend line, pretty very well defined. Numerous reactions. That's what I like to see. Breakdown, and so far it's hit this first support level. I have a support level. Uh, this is not an official trade idea. It's not one of my favorites, but it's one worth mentioning because of the importance of the sector. So around sixty-four dollars. It hit that yesterday, and as is so often the case, as the sector itself is doing, the initial tag of support from above often produces a reaction. In this case, it's a, a decent bounce, two point six eight percent. Uh, but that's about a run-of-the-mill move for a, a semiconductor like this. Uh, there's a, these are additional targets. And before all is said and done, I think Qualcomm's coming down to this area, about 56, uh, 15. Let's see if there's anything worth noting on the weekly chart. Big uh, descending, broadening wedge pattern. There was actually a trend line there that was taken out, that trend line. So that looked bullish at the time. However, what you have here is an extremely extended PPO. Look at that run on the PPO. You usually see big runs like that uh, and then following that you see big corrections. So that's a high level and it's also I circled a bearish cross in, pro in progress. So you have a bearish crossover which is also a sell signal. You go back, uh, you guys are probably familiar with using a histogram on a PPO or a MACD. Histograms will show you those crosses but that I'm referring when the uh, this, the PPO line crosses over the signal line. In other words, that orange line over the white line. And again, they, they're they excellent uh, sell signals. They're, they indicate a, a change of trend in an early sell signal. You know, they get in, get you in right around the top. Uh, so there we are. I've circled those. You can see what happened afterwards. There we are. This is a high level crossover. So meaning I expect not just a little blip, but a nice drop. I'm talking easily down to that $60 level. Um, and again, another thing to look at is this extreme overbought nature here in the RSI. Uh, very simple but effective, especially when confirmed with things like these bearish crossovers here. Uh, I'm going to go through this a 10 year chart. So this is where we ju were just coming off overbought readings. Here we were overbought. You can see what happened after that. Uh, here we were overbought. You can see what happened after that. And here we were overbought. Okay, this is this is simple stuff, guys. This is just like you know, I always use the analogy of uh, you know somebody in, in trial and court, you know, where the prosecution has to build up a case. If you're shorting stocks, especially in a bull market, you need a strong case, and that's what we have here. So these charts just scream short, and it's been tough. The market's been tough over the last few months because we're in a sideways trading range, and we've had these ramps that we had like on the semis. But um, you know, if you have patience and, and uh, uh, you can, you know, flexible, maybe stick to your stops just in case the charts are burned through the bearish technicals. Um, you know, you can't let your losses run too much, but uh, you can always jump back into those trades. You know, I have a probably a bigger pain threshold than a lot of traders out there. Uh, you know, if, I'm, if I have a lot of conviction on a trade, I might give it uh, a good deal of room. Um, but that, again, it depends on many, many factors, which ones I allow to, to exceed my original stop allowance. And which ones I don't. TXN, Texas Instruments, another big name, pretty well defined trend line. We had a little whipsaw signal there. And again, this talks of the, uh, you know, how treacherous and tricky these markets have been. Uh, a lot of false sell signals and whatnot. But uh, this one, as you can see, I should have probably cleaned that line up. There's your divergence. So pushed up. We had a divergent high there and it did fall, gave us a false sell signal. Here's that ramp. Again, this ramp was consistent among most of the semis as well as in those ETFs. And to me, it has all the makings of a blow off top, especially the fact how, how quickly we already have come down, how big yesterday's losses were. Uh, and again, Take what you want out of it, say what you want, but to me, this is a very clean, bearish rising wedge pattern. The divergence is confirmed, uh, breaking under the trend line. Uh, this is TA101. These are the patterns I trade day in and day out for years, and uh, I see nothing less than a move down to that 66, uh, I guess it's around 66 area, uh, and then probably a bounce there and a continued move down to about 60. And that's Texas Instruments. That's a big semi, as you guys all know. Uh, long term, so here's that down, that uptrend line we're looking at. So once that cracks, uh, from a longer term perspective, I think at the very least we visit um, uh, we visit revisit this long term 
wrong tool, long-term uptrend line right here. So I'll draw that down. There's also horizontal support there. Uh, there's your over, oversold readings. In fact, see that horizontal line right here I have above? This is oversold, the 70 level, the red line. But I put this line here because this is an extreme overbought reading. We haven't seen Texas Instrument in over a decade. Uh, this overbought, I keep saying oversold, I mean overbought, um, since all the way back here in, uh, looks like early 2011. And you can see what happened from that point, from those extreme overbought readings the stock dropped 35%. I don't see any reason why we're not looking at a, you know, at least a 30, 20, 30, 35%, possibly much more drop. Again, remember, we're seven and a half, almost eight years into one of the longest bull markets in history. So sooner or later, this puppy is going to end. Um, stocks don't go up forever. And the more extreme overbought they get, the more extreme the valuations become, uh, the bigger the fall. That's all there is to it. All right. Uh, Broadcom. This one, I believe, still is in a active short trade. Let's see if the chart loads. There it goes. Uh, yep, it's you know it's been tough sledding, but it hasn't it hasn't taken us out. All the divergent highs again. This is stuff that's been covered uh, quite a bit. Uh, we had this correction here. I'm not sure why I keep grabbing the wrong drawing tools. Uh, trying to use that arrow tool, just show you the corrections that have come after these divergent highs. This is simple. Wash, rinse, repeat, folks. That's all we're doing here. And yet another divergent high. Well, that was the last divergent high. We didn't make a, a new high. Came close. However, prices are now finally starting to roll over. I've mentioned these support levels here. S1, S2. This was S3, the trend line, but it was has since been taken out. See, back here I had these as support 1, support 2, trend line support 3. So this level's already been taken out. Now we're at that last shelf uh, of support. You can see this is really, really where the stock has been topping all year, putting in this topping pattern. Um, the buyers just can't lift it higher and haven't been able to do so for months now. And uh, my expectation is once that level cracks, uh, it'll be a, probably a relatively swift move down to my first target. Uh, I see no reason why that one won't hit the second target. And I truly believe uh, if you give it time, you're willing to ride out some of these counter trend bounces, this one's going to visit that long-term target area, potential long-term target area down around 115. Uh, what does that do for, even from where we're at right now? Uh, you know, if, if it got there, that's almost a 30% drop. So again, a lot of meat on the bones here, if, especially if the broad market cooperates, which it looks like it might do. NVIDIA, this one burned us on a gap, an earnings-induced gap. That was a big loss on that one. But since then, it's been rolling over. This was just an imbalance, caught a lot of traders off guard, so rolled over. I think it'll come back down to at least that 71 level. It's had this ascending price channel, which I've added since. It kind of popped above the top. It came back in, so that's a channel overshoot. Um, not one of my favorites, but I think there's a lot of room to fall there. AMAT, this is one of the chip equipment makers. So this is, this, you know, if the semis are the canary in the coal mine for the tech sector, the chip equipment makers are the se uh, canary in the coal mine for the semiconductor stocks. Stocks like AMAT, KLAC, those make the equipment that make chips. Uh, so when their orders slow, that shows you the chip makers see uh, things slowing down ahead of time. Uh, so, and here's a, a beautiful, this is a nice short trade with a lot of meat on the bone, I think. I uh, don't I think I added this one as an official trade, but I know I have the chart mocked up here, and these are the targets. That one's already been hit, so we had a wedge break here, hit that first target, but then we bounced to make another, and again, just that didn't undo the bearishness, and in fact, it just made it uh, this chart even more bearish. Now we have two consecutive divergent highs. This one's even, the divergence is more steep or steeper than it was at this point. Uh, so, and this one's bouncing today. I think it's, I, right now, I think it's a great short here around 31.14. You can put a stop over those highs. So the highs were around 32.70. So you're talking about a dollar fifty or so, a little over that uh, downside risk. Or here, I'll do it this way. You're talking a, a loss of about 5% for what I think can be a gain of about 30%. And that is an attractive R to R, you know, the six to one RR blows away, you know, minimum I like to take a trade with a three to one RR, meaning I'll risk one dollar of downside or one unit of downside for every three dollars or three units of gain. And, and that's what uh, 
you know, that one has just to that official or that second target. Again, I might not have this up as an official trade, but I may put it up. Uh, AMAT. There's a weekly chart. Uh, there it is. Same story. Extremely overbought. You can see what happened the last time it became this overbought back here. The stock fell. I'll have to do it this way. It was a drop of about 42, 43%. So, uh, not bad. I think if you can get, you know, 43% on this one, shorting it again, uh, I think it's safe to say you'll outperform the stock market. And I don't think it's going to take a year to get there. Stocks, again, fall a lot faster than they fall. This, this 40 something percent drop. Uh, occurred. I have to measure it out. Okay, that that forty something percent drop happened in just seven months last time. All right, and next one up. Got a few more here. Not one of my favorite NXPI. Just one I'll mention. This one already took out this long term uptrend line. Uh, yeah, uptrend line breakdown back test, second back test. Uh, just uh, again, not one of my favorite, but one that just shows that that's probably heading lower. Micron, um, same story, extremely overbought. We all know what happens when these stocks become overbought, or at least what's happened historically. You can just look at these overbought readings. You can look at the divergent highs. It's at resistance on this weekly chart. Flip over to the daily chart. Here's another one that um, this was, I believe, an official long trade idea on the site. If it was a very least unofficial, I remember taking this one back. Um, back here off this divergent low and um i can't remember it might have been right here on the break i think it was the break of this downtrend line again i'm trying to recall there's a lot of stocks i trade and that that trend line was a target as well as this price level here so that one was good for like a 30 something percent gain uh and now we've come full circle the you know, stock you know from those lows it had a nice run uh gotta give it that we didn't catch all of it but caught a caught a good deal of it it's up about 118%, and it formed this bearish rising wedge pattern. Very clean, very well-defined. Breakdown, back test, and another high-level back test that came right around the apex of the wedge. Uh, what I like, really like about this one is that back test of that wedge right around the apex also came in uh, right up with this mega gap right here. Gaps are like magnets, and uh, they're great great levels to short especially an extended run 120 percent run up into a gap like that a huge gap you can see the reactions there uh that doesn't get any better than that so uh divergent high again it would show a little better on the ppo than it does here on the macd but uh you have divergences everything else you want to see and i think this one's going down to at least that 1630 ish area uh, which from here it's at 19, 1907. You short that today if I'm right, uh, then you're looking at about almost a 15% uh, drop on Micron. LRCX, LAM Research, uh, Rising Wedge. The divergences were burned through on this one, but yet again, birds of a feather flock together, and there's a more bearish picture if we go to a weekly chart. Daily chart isn't one of my favorites, but uh, from a weekly perspective, you can see this uptrend line, this rising wedge confirmed with negative divergence, long-standing divergence on the weekly chart. And, um, you know, there's a couple levels, those horizontal lines, those would be your, your two targets on LAM research. MCHP, another nice well-defined uptrend line, just cracked below yesterday, back testing from below. This is an objective short here with a stop not too far above, probably above today's highs, somewhere around there. And these are your target areas. I think it comes down to this one around 53 over time. And that's a pretty good drop if it gets there, about 13%. There's the same same uh, pattern on a weekly time frame. You can see the divergence on the weekly chart. SWKS, weekly chart, long-term trend line. So here's the story, guys. Common theme. Look at these long-term charts, long-term trend lines. Some of these stocks are already starting to crack, or at least they have cracked or they're about to. So any more downside on Skyworks, uh, and it takes out this long-term primary bull market uptrend line, and that is a longer-term bearish technical event. On the daily chart, it is sitting. This is a key support shelf. Numerous reactions as I move my cursor to the left. You can see reactions from above and below. You can see gaps, reactions. Uh, so this is a key level. It takes that out. That one's heading lower. I don't just look at that weekly chart if you want to target. Uh, Xilinx, not my favorite on the daily, but there's a pattern, uh, an ascending ch price channel on the weekly. Again, not one of my favorites, so we'll move on. Maxim, 
uptrend line to watch break of that uptrend line that minor uptrend line will bring you to this uh, primary uptrend line and uh, that's a pretty good drop uh, there it is There's flirting with this support level it's pierced it a few times but if it takes that out the next stop I don't see any any solid resist or support until about the 3530 area Marvel uh, this was or is a maybe that one was already stopped out uh, but here's what we have since then this ascending price channel right here right now we're on that so we're on dual support levels we have a uh, horizontal support right here around 1380 as well as this uptrend line you can see it, it was broken once but regained uh, if that goes I still maintain these longer term targets that I had before on that trade MSCC uh, extremely overbought this one got insanely ahead of itself and I think it comes back down probably at least to that 49 ish area and most likely it'll want to test the top of this gap this huge gap right here uh, and that if it does that you're talking a, a drop of 13% uh, if it enters a gap then it'll likely backfill the gap and that'll take you all the way down to the bottom of the gap for about a 19% drop from where it is now again not one of my favorites but uh, uh, certainly one that looks poised to fall. IDTI, integrated devices. You know, we had this big symmetrical triangle, broke, fell back in, hit the bottom of the triangle. It's been whippy, very whippy and tough to trade. Look at the trading history on this thing. It moves. If you can get on get on it on the right time, uh, there's money to be made both long or short. It recently broke down below this bearish uh, rising wedge. And again, let's keep the bigger picture in mind here. This is where the big money's made, uh, whether you're trading long or short. If you can, you know, if you have the gumption to hold on for the big move, uh, if and when this one breaks, it already broke its primary bull market uptrend line here, broke, back tested. This is what I call a secondary uptrend line. If and when that goes, you have some support here, big support. Um, very least you could swing trade down to that level and I could add a couple lines below and of course if that level goes the stocks really in trouble uh, ASML this is a weekly chart there's your primary uptrend line rising wedge negative divergence just like you had divergence back here when the stock fell 33 percent you have a big divergent high here we already had a drop of about 30 percent now you have this minor uptrend line and again bigger picture here guys is that we are below the primary uptrend line that already broke that was our bull market uptrend line so this you know one way to look at it it indicates that the bull market in ASML may be over it never made it failed to make a new high on that attempt if it breaks that level I see absolutely no reason why this one's not going back down to that $80 level again and then quite likely over time that $65 level uh, that's ASML we'll take a look at the daily chart just to try to hone down the entry on it I don't have a lot here on the daily chart it's hard to really get a read of it I could probably put a trend line there if I wanted I hadn't marked it up but uh, and a little support so pretty much if you're looking to short this one I think once that uh, previous reaction low goes there is around 9870 then that one goes all right that's it those are all the ones I wanted to cover that's not every component but I went through about uh, two-thirds of the components of SMH and I think the uh, the case was pretty pretty um, consistent that uh, longer term both longer term and near term on the daily time frame these guys look poised to fall so uh, hopefully you guys can make some money off those trades I can't put them all as official trade ideas as it is it's too hard to keep up with the ideas that I have there's still some longs that I haven't updated in a while that have been stopped out or don't look good short trades I think are up to date right now but uh, as always if you guys have questions on a trade idea um, you know send me a message in the trading room or via private message or on the contact form and i will get back to you on an update as soon as possible this has been randy finney with the right side of the chart hope you enjoyed it